By the time we get to the last part of Geoffrey of Monmouth's History of the Kings of Britain, the part about the Saxon dom domination, a lot of people who are uh, reading it because they're mostly interested in the King Arthur side will often just sort of give up or just sort of skim to the end because they think, well, that's the end of the, the matter of Arthur. But I think it really isn't. There are some important things that occur in this text uh, about Arthur, and uh, even though he's not named. And I want to raise a question for you, which is, how does King Arthur become a Christ figure? Now, now, what do I mean by that? Well, when we look at the Arthur section, at the end of the Arthur section, we're told that King Arthur is mortally wounded and that he goes to Avalon to have his wounds tended to. That's it. We're not told that he will come back. We're not told that he will live, um, maybe, uh, but it does say mortally wounded. So I think you could also imply that he's not, uh, that it's almost like, like a hospice care, I suppose. Um, or maybe he'll come back, but he definitely doesn't say that. All he just says is that Arthur was mortally wounded. He went to Avalon. Well, a lot of times, though, in, in, in later uh, Arthurian legend, you see the idea that King Arthur will himself return. Um, you're going to see that in, in much more that, uh, that I do in my class uh, in Arthur and legend, but it doesn't take long to find these kinds of things. And, and the idea of the king who dies for his people and then returns again is very often associated with, with Jesus Christ, which we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, but here, I think, uh, there's a question of how do we get there from there? Okay, uh, the king died. All the other kings died too. So why does he get to be a Christ figure? Well, when we look at the part about the Saxon domination, we suddenly get a lot of, hey, Britons, you fall into sin. And about how sinful the Britons have become. This is one of the really most explicitly Christian parts of history of the kings of Britain. Even earlier where we have um, some figures who are clearly Christian figures talking about sin uh, among the Britons. Uh, here, there's a kind of general commentary by Geoffrey himself. And because of that, uh, implied because of the sins, the Britons have all sorts of military setbacks, other kinds of setbacks, even a plague. So what happens here at the end? Well, at the end, you have King Codwallader, and he is, he's been displaced. He's returning with a fleet to come take back his kingdom for the Britons. And then a voice comes from heaven and tells him not to do this. And I think the fact that the voice comes uh, uh, from heaven tells us two things. One thing it tells us is that this is a part of a divine plan. But the other thing it tells us is it implies that he was going to succeed, right? Uh, if he wouldn't have succeeded, there would have been no need for God to intervene. He could have just let him go and get killed. Uh, but no, he says... Don't go do that. Um, and if you're faithful in this, if you're faithful in, 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 in leaving the Britons there, the Britons will occupy the island again at the appointed time. I think the implication being not just Wales, but they will take back the whole island again at some time in the future because King Codwallader was faithful. Um, and then, interestingly enough, Geoffrey says that the Saxons, in the last paragraph, after the Saxons have been the villains for much of this, uh, that they ru ruled peacefully. They, they ruled, they rebuilt the cities, and that they were wise in the way that they ruled. So we only have a short jump from here, for, from Arthur goes off to Avalon to, uh, and the kingdom, uh, and the Britons will themselves uh, come back, to Arthur becoming a Christ figure, right? It doesn't happen here, 
But whether he knows it or not, Jeffrey of Monmouth is setting this up so that in the next generation after Jeffrey, it doesn't take very long, Arthur becomes much, much more explicitly a Christ figure where Arthur himself, just like in the second coming, Jesus will return, put everything right, and will reestablish a new Jerusalem, a new, a new, a new earth. Uh, Arthur himself will return in fulfillment of this prophecy here. So even though we don't really see the name of Arthur much in this, just like so much about King Arthur, he just kind of rolls downhill, picking things up on the way uh, until these things become a part of him. You could have very well seen King Codwallader being the mythic figure, the Christ figure, who's going to return because of his faithfulness to rule them. But no, uh, King Arthur, there's just something uh, magical, and I mean that uh, in, in, the meta, in the meta way, not just that there's magic in the stories, but there's something magical about this character of King Arthur that he is going to collect with him even the virtues of King Codwallader later on, and he's going to be the reason that the Britons are able to reestablish their kingdom there in England.